it is. I see it. You can see it? Yeah, blue and silver with like a gray bed and all smashed up. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Think we can get it out of there? Yep, that's what we built this thing for. So it runs and drives? I'm sure it'll just start right up. It's an old Jeep. All right, let's see what we got. Ugh. Wait, is that the battery? Yeah. I think that goes in here. Huh. I think I totally flooded the carburetor for you. Oh, good. All right, battery terminal is on. Yeah, give it a couple squirts of fuel and then choke it and then I'll choke it even more with my gloves. Okay, crank. Good job, Dave! Magic hand, Dave! <laughs> All right, hopefully it'll stay running. your wheel. That's the problem. <laughs> Drive it. It's working pretty well. back here, Dave. Is it snowing up there? It's beautiful. It's like a winter wonderland. <laughs> it's got to be one of the coolest dirt everyday rigs. I really like this thing. I never knew I wanted a Jeep M715 until we rescued this thing out of the woods, and it's turned into one of my favorite trucks. Yep. However, it's not the best truck for actually getting to the trail. No, this thing's good off-road, but it drives down the actual road terribly. So this truck, we rescued it from the woods, and then we turned it into this kind of overlanding Conestoga wagon thing because you, the viewers, voted for us to build an overlander. Then it's kind of just sat, because every time we wanted to wheel it, we had to put it on a trailer and drag it somewhere. Nobody likes that. It's got a Chevy straight six, four-speed manual, a divorce transfer case, one-ton axles, but unfortunately, we have this goofy bolt pattern, and so we have to run these funky old tires and wheels, and they all seem to leak all the time, and it just is terrible on the street. So we are going to take it into the shop, we're gonna tear it down, do different axles under it, and make sure we can put proper wheels and tires on it. That's like the main goal. First step on the project is to remove all the old axles, the old transfer case, all the old drive shafts, disconnect all the old steering, and get everything out of there. By the end of today, we want the bottom of the truck stripped, so that tomorrow we can start putting parts back in. We have the transfer case out. This is the MP200 that we took out of the M715. This is a Dodge NP205, also a divorce transfer case. Basically, they're pretty much identical. This is older. The technology has gotten a little bit better. Some people claim that these will overheat if you run them down at the highway speeds, but the gearing's pretty identical. One to one high range, 1.97 low range. That's good. Yeah. That looks about right. Let's go down a little more. 
Yeah, dude. Can in the ballpark. And it doesn't look freakishly tall. Awesome. The suspension's in, the axles are in, exhaust shocks, all that stuff. We bled the brakes, and now it's time to put tires on it. Fred tracked down these 39, 13, 50, 17 BFG all-terrains. These should run down the road pretty well and get decent tire wear. We've got to space the wheel out a little bit because this axle is sort of narrow. So we're running two inch wheel spacers. We always say don't run wheel spacers and then we end up doing it. If you're gonna run them, do what the instructions say, put some Loctite on the studs, run the smaller lug nuts on there so you can get a socket in there and then use your factory lug nuts on the outside. I'm gonna button all this stuff up and see how it looks. The big reveal. Bum, bum, bum. Greatest truck ever. This truck looks killer. We've done tires, wheels, axles, brakes, shocks, suspension, steering, drive shafts, transfer case, exhaust, and just about everything you need to do to a truck to make it drive down the road, except touch the engine, which we're not even gonna worry about that. Look at this thing. It's a monster. It's so much better. So it used to not drive down the road at all, or not very well. Now it's gonna rip down the highway. No problem. Yeah, like 70 or 80 miles an hour, probably. We have about 200 miles to get to the trailhead. The thing has new tires, new wheels, new axles, better drive shafts, better brakes, better suspension, locking differentials. It should not only run down the highway, it should wheel way better than it did before. All right, let's see. Way more responsive. Hey, it runs pretty good. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's the big deal, officer? We've given it like a 15 mile shakedown run. And we haven't gotten on a highway yet. But we have to get on a highway if we're gonna get all the way to the trailhead. What's it matter? We're going at highway speeds almost. Good enough. Almost, good enough. We're going at the speed we will be going on the highway. <laughs> yes. We made it to a trailhead of a trail that's just north of Los Angeles, actually. Yeah. Which is kind of cool, because it feels like we're out in the middle of nowhere. 200 miles south of where we started from, though. That's pretty impressive. We got this old truck through the highways and byways. We only ran all of the oil out once. Yep. Um, but the steering and brakes seem to be working good. We topped off the oil this morning, got a full tank of fuel. And because we're dirt every day, we have to go find dirt. So right. let's go see what this thing will do. Is it better to be thrown from a convertible or stay in it? Neither. <laughs> it's definitely smoother with less air in the tires. Yeah. Nice little stream. Running good. Awesome. The front weren't doing anything, or just the rear? We'd be peeling out if we were just in two-wheel drive. I think it's all good. Dude, it's doing it. Yeah. It seems like it's definitely just in two-wheel drive. Yeah. But we got too low for some reason. See if you can get this lever forward. Okay. I would just drive it in too low, get over here to the edge a little closer, and then we'll figure it out. It's 
We should drive up that giant hill. Definitely one little area you want to take a truck that runs bad, steers bad, but it has new axles. That it sure does. Now we're four wheeling. We did all the things we needed to do. All right, come on truck, climb this hill. I think front and rear lockers definitely makes it feel more secure. Yeah. Gotta have something going for it. switchbacks all the way up, I think. Yeah. All right. There we go. Up to the second corner. <laughs> I'll count them off. OK. Two. Two switchbacks to the top of 100 Switchback Hill. The engine seems pretty happy at this RPM. Yeah. It's just kind of moving along. Non-synchro first is where it's at. <laughs> Keep it running, Fred. Oh boy. Come on! Come on, stay running! Oh boy. Well, the goal was to make this thing more street worthy. Yes. And it did better on the street than it did in the dirt. <laughs> Yesterday we drove 200 miles, today we drove like two. Yeah. And I, I was under the impression if it can drive down the street, it's going to off-road great. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine until, like, the steering stopped working and we were on these death cliff switchbacks and tried to make it start. Yeah. Basically, everything under the hood still needs some work. All right. But the axles look great. Yeah. The lockers worked awesome. Tires went down the road smooth. I'm glad we had disc brakes on some of those hills. Yeah, pretty good. Now we'll take it home. We'll start all over again on the front. Oh, jeez. That's it for Dirt Every Day. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, now we're cooking. <laughs>